Hello, Clint McDonald back, and today we're going to start a about a three tutorial series on N tiered development and hard coding database applications. We're going to look at a part of ADO or ActiveX uh, data objects, which are part of how we do this uh, in the real world or how commercial software is actually done. So we're going to look at N-tier development today and moving forward. So specifically what we're going to look at is creating a database definition class. And the idea here is to ease your life when working with databases so that you can separate the user interface from the database. And later on with more advanced software you would have a middle tier or a business layer which would be between the user interface and the database. So today we're going to look at specific just the database definition class, how to formulate it, how to create it, what it is, and look at some good practices. In the next tutorial we'll start actually programming it and looking at how to read data from the database. And then the third tutorial we'll look at two-way communication, so writing back to the database again. So where we're starting today is we have our, our in our Solution Explorer here, you can see that we have our database already put in right here tutorial 21 we have some references put in um, we have our form so our form just simply right here with a label a second label to put some information into combo box list box and a data grid view so if I bring this over here and make this a better size something like that so that's what we're working with today so we're going to look at specifically into the categories information but for right now, we're just going to look at the generics of what's going on here. So what we're going to do is you create a data, a, a class object. So if you right click on the project, you can say add class, okay? And that will allow you to add a class. And so I've already done that, so I'm going to cancel out of that. But for instance, we're going to start working with this specific class. And I've called this class DBL. And DBL stands for database layer and that would be the database layer in an end tier development software package and again you would have your user interface layer your middle or your business layer in the middle and then the database layer would be the foundation and so we're working on the foundation so it's really good um, practice to make sure that you set these up and you structure them the long and the short of this is what we're going to work on for these three tutorials is stuff that for the most part commercial software developers don't actually have to write anymore. We use code generation techniques to develop these, but anytime you use code generation or built-in wizards or anything, it's very important that you understand what's happening under the hood because it's not really appropriate to use something that you don't understand or you're going to end up with a world of hurt with things that you don't understand. So that's why senior programmers have spent years and years and years learning everything that happens under the hood so that when they work with simplistic top layer uh, coding they know what's happening under the hood so if there's any modification or customization they can work with it so a basic database layer um, database layer would be structured similar to this now as your software gets larger and larger and larger you'll probably have to split these sections into separate files so your tables views functions and store procedures would likely be separate files or this file may be hundreds of thousands if not millions of lines of code for very large databases so it's really important to make sure that you understand the scalability of your software and work from that perspective so right now inside this we're going to use a namespace for dbl now a namespace is exactly the same as a class except you can't instantiate it so all it is is a spot where you can use that space so if I go into my code behind file here I can say dbl dot and there's my subclasses so the namespace just gives us part of our IntelliSense and our pathway to our specific objects so within this we're gonna have five sections and and you can have more or less depending on your specific situation the, the connection string is something that some people place in the DBL and some people send it in, into the DBL. Uh, for this particular tutorial, to keep it simplistic, I'm going to put it in the, in the uh, DBL. So what you do is you create a subclass called con and then inside that create a single method 
that returns a string and that's going to go and get your connection string however you've set it up. In this particular project, I have set it up in the project properties right here. So because it's set up in the project properties, I can use my.settings.dbcon. All right, makes that really simple. So I can use dbl.con.get connection string at any time I want to get the connection string. And if that connection string ever changes, I simply change it in the configuration, which is simply an XML file in the uh, executed compiled program. Okay. So we're going to close off the connection. Now your four database particular classes are tables, views, some people know views as queries. So tables, views or queries, functions and store procedures. There are other ones that you can use like keys and triggers and relationships and stuff that you could build and program. Uh, for the most part, unless you have very high-end software, uh, you're not going to have those kind of situations. So for now, we're going to stick to the four basic one. And in fact, we're only going to actually program the tables one. The other ones, once you know how to do the tables, the other ones are actually fairly straightforward. So within each one of these classes, you're now going to define the table. So inside the tables class, we're going to define a subclass for each table. As you can see here in the database, in the server explorer, I define a class for each specific table. Now, for the most part, these are all empty right now. I just want to show you that they're here. For the categories one, I've actually coded it here, and we will go into that in detail over the next two tutorials. So, but how to structure each particular table is fairly specific. Um, you, there's all kinds of different ways to do this. And if you talk to five different programmers, they'll probably tell you five different ways to do this. But for the most part, this is the one way that I find fairly straightforward it's a good balance between strongly coded or strongly typed code versus the flexibility and scalability to add to it if you need to or to customize it. So because this is a class object and we're going to instantiate these class objects, so we're going to create an object of type dbl.tables.categories. And so we can use the properties of that class object right here and those properties can match and set the field names of the category. So the properties are set as the fields or a representation of them. They don't have to be named the same thing, but at least be a representation of them. And the most important part of setting the properties is, is that the type is actually set as the same type as the database. Now in this particular database, the primary key is a string. So this is a string. If you had some kind of an index, uh, an index field or an auto number field or something that was an integer base, then you would change this type to match the appropriate type. So an auto number field, for instance, would be an integer. Okay. Obviously for scalability, you may want int 32 or int 64. Um, depends on if you're going to have more than a billion records type of thing. The next part of the table definition is a simple little subclass which all it does is define some constants of the field names. Now again, these names here do not need to match those in the database, but represent them. But these ones need to be the names in the database exactly. They have to match. So the spelling here exactly has to match what you have in the server, uh, in the SQL Server database definition. The third section is, I like to keep my SQL statements separate. And what this does is it allows me to have a single place to modify my SQL statements. Now again, in commercial software, you would probably never use SQL statements directly in your code. That's what store procedures are for, to prevent against SQL server injection attack or, or SQL injection attacks. And so therefore, at least I've used parameters here, which is step one of protecting against those kind of attacks. Store procedures are the best way. So for now, for learning purposes, we're using this, but when you get into commercial software, you should be using store procedures. So I've set them all here up for your basic select one, select all, insert, update, and delete. And there are more, obviously, for high-end software, but we're just going to talk about the five basics. Once you know the five basics, then just adding to it is just a matter of adding to it. We're going to have our constructors here. So I only have two. You, a lot of people add a third one, and the parameter list for the third constructor is all the fields listed. So it could be something like public sub new category ID as string comma 
short name as string, comma, long name as string, something like that. And then you could go ahead and set your properties of your object based on the input parameters, something like this. Just make this really quick, long name, something like that, okay? So you can have different constructors so that you can create dbl.tables.categories class objects in a numerous different ways. And what this does is if you don't have a category ID, you can create a new one by giving it the information. You can create a, a new blank one, or you can give it the category ID in which it would go to the database and read the information and then return the values. So this would be one that you might want to set up if you're creating a new record. This is one if you want to read from the database, and this is your generic one just to set up whatever you want if you're manipulating the information. So your constructors are an important part. And then the final and, and the do stuff part of the class is the class methods. And this is where we do things where we're writing, reading from the database. So go get a record, get all records, insert, update, and delete existing records. So I'm going to close this up for now. And what we're going to do for uh, the next tutorial is we're going to look at the first two methods here. And this is where we're going to start reading from the database and populating objects so that we can fill in information on the screen. Thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it.